Hello, everybody, and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. South Africa, 27. Ireland, 20. South Africa take first blood. They get the victory over in Pretoria. And the main thing, for example, it being a two-match series, the series is we can't lose the series now. The only worst we can do is draw. Very interesting game, which was a bit stagnant for, for a long time. And then all of a sudden... Got very, very exciting very quickly. Um, so many tries right towards the, the death of the game. A bit of a scare for the box. I mean, the eight yellow cards. I mean, we literally, we saw points, no points between the 34 and the 64 mark. And then after that, we saw uh, three tries for the spring box, two tries for Ireland. Five tries within the last basically 15 minutes. It was absolute chaos. But in the end, the spring box are standing tall, getting the job done. A massive shout out to the bomb squad who, especially with that last try, that penalty try, for example, um, that was that was the moment really um, that, that won the game. So uh, very, very interesting. And we're going to break the game down in just a little bit. Um, but before we do that, make sure you smash the like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Let's get into it, shall we? Uh, in terms of uh, your uh, timeline, first points of the game came in the second minute. Uh, phenomenal try from Kurt Lawrence. And we initially already saw, you know, a very different South Africa on the attack. Going out wide, we saw Sia Khaleesi, Pierce Depp, the Toy, finding styles on that wide channels. We shift towards the left. Jesse Creel ran into some really good space. He's busy giving his man of the match uh, speech at the moment. What a game from him. But he drew some space, popped it to Khaleesi, Popped it to Orenser. Orenser with a space bang inside of the debutante Jamie Osborne. And he goes over. Andre Pollard as the extras. Perfect start. Uh, we then concede a try. Sorry, I concede a penalty a few minutes later. And uh, Crowley makes it seven points to three. Before we then start to grow into the game, we had lots of very interesting moments. Sia Khaleesi running over Robbie Hedgeshaw, for example. The, the, the run down the wing for Pierre Stepp, the toy. We certainly looked a lot more multifaceted on the attack today and uh, Tony Brown's influence definitely started to come through but weren't accurate enough. Uh, two, two penalties in the half and then a late penalty from Ireland it meant that we went into half time 13 points to eight up. Uh, so not a late penalty, that, that try from Osborne. Let's actually take a moment to look at that try because it was a great try. Um, long pass out wide to Dan Sheehan who basically just watched uh, James Lowe come around and pop the ball in behind him. James Lowe right up against the touchline, threw it back to the Davidson Osborne who went over Half time, 13 points to eight. In a weird situation where obviously we had the lead, but it didn't feel like we'd capitalized on, on the way we had played. I felt we had played a lot better than the scoreline had suggested. And Ireland, maybe even characteristically a bit poor. Second half was a proper arm wrestle in that first sort of 20 minutes. Uh, Pollard didn't have his kicking boots on, neither did Jack Crowley, actually, to be fair, throughout the game. Um, but it all sort of came up alive. When James Lowe kept the ball in sight. Oh, by the way, a disallowed try by James Lowe for an infringement at the ruck. That'll be an interesting one to keep an eye on during the week where the people do sort of debate that one. But a few minutes after that, James Lowe tried to keep a, a kick to touch from Andre Pollard in. And in doing so, put the ball back inside. Chesney Colby was chasing. Chesney Colby kicked ahead and scored a try. Massive moment in the game. Pollard added an extra, the extra two. And all of a sudden, 20 points to eight. Conor Murray, however, struck back in the 74th minute after some great defense. There was a yellow card to the box, some great defense, and then just an inside ball. Ronan Kelly is suddenly finding so much space. Good support play from Conor Murray. And um, all of a sudden, Ireland back in the game at 20 points to, to 15 with five minutes to go. But just two minutes later, well, actually, immediately from the kickoff, uh, Sasha Feynman Gomez really goes deep. James Lowe makes a hash of it, knocks it back, then knocks it forward. Five meter scrum, penalty try, massive moment in the game as well. And uh, whilst it was a late try from Ryan Beard, a little too little, too late. Final score, 27 points to 20. I'm exhausted just going through that again. It was very high octane in those last sort of 20 minutes. Uh, let's look at the stats, shall we, and see sort of where the game was sort of won and lost. If we look at um, possession, for example, in the final 10 minutes, 80% with Ireland, obviously chasing the game. Um, overall, 50-50, in fact, throughout the entire 80. Uh, if we look at territory, 52% to 48%, so very even between the two teams. But uh, this is what's interesting. Both scrums at 100%, um, so we kind of clutched up when we needed to. But overall, didn't have this kind of scrum dominance we wanted. In fact, that'll probably be a bit of a, a flag to raise during the week in terms of the fact we didn't get that scrum dominance. Irish lineup was not good. We, we started a lot of lineups there. Just 71%. On the other hand, the box lineup, 92% looked a lot better. 
this is where it gets fun. Look at the attack stats here from, from South Africa. When were we ever going to um, predict that we had very similar sort of post-contact meters, more line breaks than Ireland? 172 passes for South Africa, 158 for Ireland. 114 carries from the box, 110 for Ireland, very similar. 183 post-contact meters for the box, 213 for Ireland. Six line breaks to three. Turnovers won, seven from the Ireland. The breakdown continues to be a bit of a concern for the box. Uh, 17 turnovers lost, and we just won the two turnovers. Um, but penalties-wise, discipline, nine penalties apiece, the two, or a yellow card each as well. Um, tackle completion, almost identical. 138 tackles made by the box, 141 from Ireland, both at 87%. Total kicks, 20 points, 21. I mean, it was incredibly even from a stats perspective, um, which is interesting. Quacker Smith, by the way, topped the carry charts with 12 carries. Jesse Creel with 10. Um, if we look at the line breaks, Jesse Creel, 2, matching Kurt Lee-Orenser. Um, tackles completed. Peter Steph to toy with 18, by the way. Then Ty Byrne with 13. Franco Mostert with 12. We look at uh, turnovers, 1. Kellen Doris with 3. Bundy Aki with 2. Quacker Smith and Malcolm Marks with 1 apiece. Uh, this for me is where JC Creel was so impressive. 77 meters carried. The next best was James Lowe and then Kirk Lee Orenser. Uh, we mentioned defenders beaten. Cheslin Colby, five. Quaka Smith, four. Dale Lindy, three. James Lowe, four. Um, the main thing, I think, from a Springboks perspective is it was very different to what we're used to. It was. And uh, that's very promising in terms of how we're going to progress as a side. So let me know what you think of that performance down in the comments below. Um, smash like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Um, and we're going to get to our player ratings.